Hi, uh, this is Rushab here and uh, welcome to the uh, developer training and screencast uh, on creating uh, an application in Frappe. This is session four. Uh, in the first three sessions, we walked you through installing an app and creating doc types in Frappe. We are making an app to help us uh, manage meetings and track uh, minutes of a meeting agenda and all of that. The screencast has been jointly created by Anand and myself. And let us quickly uh, go through what we did last time. We just created a, 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 we just created an application where uh, we could create um, minutes, uh, we could create meetings and then add minutes and attendees to the meeting and add agenda items. So what we really want to emphasize with these tutorials is that you uh, also build it side by side. The best way you learn anything, especially technology like uh, like Frappe framework, is by making it yourself. Uh, if you ever need to know the source of what you're doing, you can go to this site. And if you need help, you can uh, connect with here. Uh, so let us uh, start with uh, the session. So this is what a form looks like. Uh, we created this during an ERB next community uh, meetup. So that's what the meeting is going on. Um, so now that we can add attendees uh, to the meeting, uh, the first thing we want to really check is uh, we want to do a couple of things. First, we don't have the full name here yet. And we really want the full name to appear automatically when you select the user. So this is where we can start uh, scripting. Um, uh, scripting the talk type. So let us go back to the code. Uh, once you create doc types in the module folder, uh, meeting module folder, you will see a, a, a folder created for each doc type, uh, whether it's a parent or child table. And then you have a, a, a Python template file, a boilerplate file that uh, creates the module, that uh, defines the functionality of the module. So, in, so welcome to the first thought bubble of uh, this session. Let us in introduce how we can uh, do scripting in Frappe framework. Uh, we, start, we learned how to make forms. Now we'll uh, learn how to automate certain actions and uh, do a lot more magic. So if you understand how the architecture works, you have a browser and you have a server that interacts with the server which is remote and then the server remote with the database. So there are two places you can add scripts. You can add scripts inside your browser to give user feedback to their actions. And you can add scripts on the server to manipulate data before it is saved to the database uh, or do a lot of other stuff. So in Frappe framework, uh, we, uh, the app is divided into modules and uh, each module is divided into a doc type. And that's how the folder structure also works. So the client and the server scripts for the doc type are inside the doc type folder. So if you browse the folders, you will. Uh, it's a pretty intuitive and easy structure and you can easily make out. When you uh, create, uh, uh, so, so the server script uh, uh, for each uh, doc type, uh, there is a class of the doc type that inherits from a base document class. And this has a lot of uh, methods that you use to uh, connect with a database like save and insert method. So let's learn how to use that uh, in our screencast. In a meeting class, which represents the meeting doc type, uh, you can, um, you can add events. So there are standard events in Frappe like validate, which is called before saving a document. You have uh, before insert, after insert, you have on, after update, on update, you have on submit, and a whole bunch of events uh, which you can just define functions and they will, uh, you can define methods and they will be called when the user or when a particular action happens on a doc type. So now let us loop through all the attendees in, in the attendee list and then uh, make sure that an attendee, okay, uh, so now uh, we're looping through the attendees and checking that if their full name is not set, then we just set their full name. So as we define the field name for the table meeting attendee as attendees, uh, you can, all the attendees are automatically attached to the uh, to the class object. So you can loop over all the attendees like uh, for for attendee in self dot attendee. Um, 
so each row will be loop now let us uh, get the first name and the last name for from the user record of that particular attendee so we had defined the field attendee uh, uh, which stores the username in the, so the first frappe api method we're going to use is frappe get doc you can use this a lot. Frappe get doc just loads a document, uh, creates an object for that particular user. So let's quickly get into a thought bubble and talk, uh, briefly talk about the get doc uh, function. The get doc function, if you pass the doc type and the name, uh, it will return you an object, and that object is of the class document. And that object has all the properties, for example, first name, last name, or whatever are the properties. And then you can just call the save method or the insert method on that. Uh, particular document to save it to the uh, uh, database and you can also have custom classes uh, custom methods that you can define in your controller inside the top 10 so let's get back to the screen uh, screencast so now what we're going to do is we're just going to join the first name and the last name of that particular user uh, we're going to filter because uh, the last name is not mandatory so if the user does not, uh, the middle name and the last name is not mandatory. So if the user does not have those, then you don't add uh, spaces before or after the name. And what to set a particular property in an object, you just say uh, attendee.fullName uh, is equal to, so that automatically sets the property in your code. Uh, but this this is not saved here. But note that this method is called before saving. So if you so any property you set right now will be saved in the top. So now let us just um, quickly save uh, this particular doctor and then what we will see is that uh, the name is already set. But this does not work for uh, new. Uh, so when you select on a new row, it automatically does not select the username. So what we really want is when the user selects, the uh, when the user is selected in the link field, the full name should automatically be updated uh, in, in, in the browser itself. And, the, and you should not wait to save the document. So let's save the document. So what what we need to do is we need to write a server side method that returns the full name of any given user. So we just take the, the, uh, the function that we wrote for writing a full name and we break it down into uh, a simple function that just returns the full name of a user. So just note that all these functions are already there in the Flappy framework, but we're just starting to build things from scratch so that it, for the purpose of training. Let's quickly enter a thought bubble and discuss client-side scripting. So the way we have a Python file for uh, uh, do, uh, executing scripts on the server side, we have JavaScript files that can help you manipulate data inside the browser while the user is entering the data. For example, we can uh, have event uh, handlers that listen to certain triggers like a change of email and that particular script can then update the first name and last name based on the email. So these things uh, happen inside the browser while the user uh, actually enters the data. Now let's uh, build this functionality uh, in the screencast. Now we need to write a trigger that when the user is selected, the full name should be fetched from the server. To write triggers on forms, these are written in JavaScript because they are executed in the browser. You create a JS file for each uh, in the doc type module, so the JS file is automatically loaded along with the doc uh, along with the document. So whenever you open a minute uh, a meeting, the the meeting .js file is automatically loaded. In in the in the meeting .js file, we will we will uh, attach uh, an event handler on the property attendee inside the meeting attendee. So just note that there are no JS files for child event. All your event bindings that have to be done on the parent or the child have to be done in the JS file of uh, the parent. 
child does not uh, also support uh, child uh, does not also support uh, uh, server side events either. Server side events are also on parent lock directory. So here we are writing an event uh, handler for attendee. So whenever the value for attendee will be set, this particular uh, method will be called here. Uh, again, we use the Frappe model get doc, which loads the local version of the doc. So now you have two versions of the doc. The local version is which is in the browser, which is not saved, and then the server version, which is in the database. So here we say that if the attendee is set, uh, if the attendee is set, then we need to get the full name. And if the attendee is unset, we need to clear the full name. Time for another thought bubble. Now, uh, when we are writing scripts on the client, uh, we'll often need to get data from the server which is not already present uh, in the in the client side. So for that, we use the frappe.call uh, function. So, we, so when you pass a method to frappe.call, the, the method uh, is a server-side method that sits in some Python module. Uh, frappe will call that method for you and then return uh, whatever value that uh, method returns uh, into the callback function. So let's use the uh, frappe.call uh, method. Now we've defined the method. Uh, we've defined the method in. Uh, we just define the method get full name uh, that we need to call. So the function that we use to call a server side method in frappe is frappe.call. So we just say it's it just does an ajax call uh, an asynchronous call to the server to fetch the full name uh, of the user so the method name you define is the full python path to that particular method so here we have meeting is the app name meeting is again the module name the doc type is the name of the folder where all the doc types are saved meeting is the name of the doc type uh, file uh, folder and then we take the doc type file and then the function so if you are just having one module and one doc type then this looks an overkill but um, uh, if you are having a very complex app then, then this will certainly start making sense uh, alternatively you can also set this uh, in another function uh, uh, outside um, outside this file and then this could be anywhere it could be in any python file function so how do you how do you identify whether a function can be called globally so every function obviously every method can't be called globally you have to whitelist it so when you do frappe or whitelist then it allows this uh, method to be accessible from uh, uh, accessible from the web so as you can see uh, there has been so we can't see the table because we so again this is a live screencast so uh, you can easily check if there are bugs in your code and then uh, probably there is a bug in the javascript code so you just open your javascript console to uh, fix the bug and uh, uh, i think it's just the refresh did not happen so now as as you see as soon as you as soon as we selected the user the username has automatically been selected but now we have this problem right that uh, we have we, we are able to select the same attendee twice so we'll have to write a method invalidate to stop this behavior so we'll have to keep uh, we'll have to throw a validation uh, an exception to the user to stop uh, adding the same attendee to it twice So let us just keep track uh, while we are looping through all the attendees. Let us just keep track of the attendees that have already been listed and then uh, make sure that if that attendee has been uh, listed again, then we throw, an, uh, we throw an exception. So if we find the attendee a second time, we are going to use an exception. So again, the function to throw an exception is frappe.throw. This will stop the execution of um, the of the saving call and then uh, display the message as we show here. As you can see, the message has been uh, uh, called by an underscore function. So 
any string that has to be visible to the user has to be wrapped inside the underscore function because it has to be translatable. So, flap, so Flappy again supports uh, multi multiple languages out of the box and any uh, method starting with underscore automatically marks it to be uh, uh, so there we are uh, there was an exception that was thrown when we saved um, and uh, let's do more advanced scripting in the next session hope you like this one and i'll see you again in session five thanks